Hello, welcome to an APH Access Academy, Advanced Creations to Include Snap Rover. And I am going to turn it over to Ken Perry and Heather McKenzie, our presenters today. Ken, take it away. So since this is an advanced class, I expect you all to be able to do calculus. Um, so if you know you can't, no, uh, I won't drop you off like that. So today we're going to talk about the advanced uh, creations, and it says to include Snap Rover, but we're also going to include things like Snap, you know, Snap Circuit Junior, um, and all kinds of stuff. And we'll talk about that a little more after I go through these few slides. So this is my agenda. Um, oh wow, did I go past? Oh, I'm not in the slideshow window, am I? You're doing fine. It says agenda, introductions, learning objectives, resources, and questions. Well, that's very interesting. It was doing so well. And oh, yeah, true. okay. <laughs> learning, I can see what, so you read them off, but it's introductions, I, learning objections. Uh, so my name is Ken Perry. As she said, I'm the senior software engineer. I originally brought these uh, snap circuits to APH. But these have been around a long time. If those of you have done electronics before, um, before Snap Circuits, Alinkro made a product, and I'll show you what they used to a piece of them used to look like. But they were with springs, so that a person could take and use regular electronics. But instead of using snaps, you would actually um, you would uh, actually <laughs> somebody said there's no uh, handouts uh, to this, but uh, there will be a web page I'll send you to in a second. And uh, then you can look while I talk, uh, but that uh, there is no handouts, but there is a PowerPoint. This one, it'll have uh, resources that we'll send. But anyways, uh, so I'll show you some of the Alinkro uh, spring stuff, uh, how you could use regular electronics and uh, how that has evolved into the snap circuits. Uh, and then there's some resources that I'll have on this PowerPoint. So let me go to the next slide. Oh, look, that's me, senior software engineer, blah, blah, blah. I guess I'm a little late on that one. I guess I should put that second. Okay, learning objectives. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, combining kits to make advanced stuff, including robotics. Uh, well, this one's kind of, uh, so this is basically using the um, electronics that I have and other tools, and I'll talk about those. Uh, identify other snap circuit parts and how to get them, how to make advanced robotics and how to share it with other communities and describing various coding tools. So that's pretty much what we're gonna talk about today. Um, and if it gets too crazy, ask questions. I, I think, Leon, I don't mind if we interrupt because this is gonna be pretty much a, uh, this is gonna be pretty much a, um, demo and talk so but no problem. i mean I'll, I'll run through it but if they have a question that they just want to go over now i don't know uh leanne but uh, i'm getting these announcements is that something that can be turned off if not that's okay oh it is and i will have to remember the keystroke to turn it that's off okay for you. so i'm starting out uh, i'm going to start out with part so i'm going to stop on um well actually let me talk a little bit about this the submersible audio light sensor is about to come out it's actually on order for production so I can actually talk about it. Um, but it's a audio light sensor that is for chemistry. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I'm the one who designed the hardware and the software. And I started with the electronics I know. And the first, uh, well, the first snap um, SALS was created by an engineer, but he created it as a standalone box. And we found that it was gonna cost too much to make and sell. so we created a Bluetooth probe and I used uh, snap circuits to model the very first one. And then I went from there. So I'm gonna show you kind of a progression of how I built it. And that's where I'm going to start. Well, I'm actually gonna start with parts, but uh, one, uh, this is the first slide I had. So I just wanted to let you know, this is what the probe is gonna look like. And I'll show you where it started from and, and how we got to where we're at. So let's switch over to the, I'm gonna to switch to the, uh, camera. Uh, whoops. Um, there it is. All right, so I'm going to spin around here. You'll see a mess of stuff on my, you're going to get a, to see a little more of my craziness today because I have a lot of stuff to show. So 
I want to uh, make sure I have everything I need here. Hold on. Okay. Yep, I got everything. So uh, I was going to show some of these parts because when you're talking about doing advanced stuff with uh, snap circuits, you can purchase parts from a Linkro, and the site is actually either in the resources or Heather may share it while I'm talking about it, but that's up to her. Um, these are all parts, let me see, that you can either get from other kits or, hmm, how'd that one get there? Um, that you get can get from, let me, okay, I want to make sure I didn't just toss the wrong part. While you're looking for that, uh, Ken, can you just give another reminder, if you would, about the link that you would like dropped in? I want to make sure that I drop the correct item into the chat window, but I'm not seeing it. So the, the resource link, uh, and Heather might have it too, but it, the one I'm talking about is the Linkro parts. If it's not up there, it's at the bottom of blinksoft.com slash parts.html. Amy, I'm grabbing it. Thank you kindly. Okay, so anyways, you can get extra parts, and these are a collection of stuff that I've got over the years from different kits or I've purchased. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, let me go to the three. This is um, a piece, and if you notice, it's got springs. Um, this is how the original... Um, this is how the original Linkro kits were. They were full boards of just springs. So there's a whole bunch of springs. And what this is for is you could take and you place a part under here. And when you let go, it grabs the part. And you could put up to maybe 10 parts per spring and actually connect them that way. So what you'd end up with is this big wire mess. Uh, so what they wanted to do was make something simpler that kids could learn to do. So, But they didn't want to lose the springs. And I'll show you why. So this is a three piece. So it's got three it's got three connections. And um, so I could actually put like a transistor because transistors have three legs and I could connect it to this and have a basic transistor that I bought offline that is not snap circuit ready. So what I've done here, I've got this little bitty motor. You can see it. If you see that little bitty motor, that is actually a vibrator motor for a cell phone. And uh, what I've done is I've connected it by a two snap. And so if I run power through this right now, it'll run the motor and it'll vibrate. That just gives me a little more feedback because uh, I couldn't find a snap circuit piece that had a vibration piece. And so I built my own. And I mean, it's so simple because I purchased these motors for about uh, $10 for 20 of them. And you can find them on Amazon, just search for vibration motors. And I bought about 20 of them, and uh, so I have extra, but uh, I just um, placed the wire under the thing, and now I have an accessible vibrator. So that's something you can do if you're making stuff with snap circuits. Um, the next thing I want to show, this is actually a capacitor, but it didn't come with the snap circuit sets. I um, needed a special... Um, special uh, special size capacitor. And so I took this to my engineer at work and you can buy parts. That's why I have this bag here. If you notice, these are snap circuit parts and you can build your own thing. So if you have things that you want your kids to be able to use and you have an engineer that can do some soldering, you can actually make your own snap circuit parts to do whatever you like. This is a big piece. There's some smaller pieces like the like the one you just saw that somebody made. So here's the base to the two piece. Uh, let's see what else has it got in here. Yeah, so here's the rest of the two piece. So all it is is a two snap and it's got a little place where you can solder parts. And then when you snap it together, it becomes just like a snap circuit part. So that's uh, how you can build some of your own parts like this one. Um, let's see, that's another capacitor. So this is a special battery. Some of the kits come with it or a special battery holder. It's for nine volt, as you can see, I've placed the nine volt on it. And so that means I've got two positives and a negative. So this way, if I'm doing something that needs a bit more power and I don't wanna have to use the Rover body, this is a battery replacement for uh, battery parts, but you need, to make, you need to make sure that all the um, voltages fit with the, the um, part you're using. Now I will say you don't have to worry about blowing up diodes like you do if you're doing regular electronics because they have put 
uh, an extra resistor in the diodes already. So if you put too much voltage, they might get really bright, but they're, they're, they're hopefully restricted enough they won't blow up. Now, you run AC through them or something like if you plug them into the wall, you're going to have real trouble. But uh, if you don't plug them into the wall, batteries probably won't kill them. Okay, this is a second. So if you see this one's a nine volt battery holder. Uh, this looks like the nine volt battery holder, but it's got a couple extra snaps. This hole on the top is where you stick a DC power supply that you plug into the wall and it splits out 4.5 volts, 4.5 volts. It's got two negatives and it gives you three volts. So you can actually have different voltages and you can you know, support different builds. This way, if you've got a bunch of kids that uh, are gonna be building a lot of stuff, this will not, um, this will not cost you a million dollars in batteries. These are about, uh, I think they're $29, but if you think about the battery cost to both environment and uh, your pocketbook, this is pretty cheap um, to run a lot of snap circuit stuff. Um, this is a, uh, the, I think it was a, I can't remember the U21, might have been, I don't remember the number, uh, but it is actually a chip socket. And I'm going to show you how I can use this in another build here today. Uh, it will take a four leg, so eight leg, but four on each side chip of any kind. This one right now has a programmable chip in it. This is precursor to Arduino. This has a it's called a PICX M8. So it's a very basic uh, programmable chip. And when I say basic, you have to actually write in the basic programming language. So uh, it's very simple. Now I don't, I have some sample code, but I don't have it to show today, but I'm only showing it because this is what they used to use before people use Arduino. And now they've added something else, which I don't have the part for, but um, you can still get this. And so if you need a simple way to program a simple thing, this is a, a good way to do it. But also you can take this chip out. Let's see if I'll do it. Well, maybe I can't take it out. It's really stuck in there. Okay, yeah, there it goes. Boom, there it goes. So now you'll see it's just a socket. So if I had another chip, I could stick it in and I don't know where I just shot that to. Oh, got it. So you can put it in. The, the big thing is you'd have to know to put it. Oh, I see what's happening. One of the legs was really wickedly moved. So um, it was holding itself in there. So you can just put it right back in. And it's not as hard as you might think blind to stick it right back in there. So there you go. Um, and it's programmable by the computer. So that's those are some of the parts I wanted to show. Um, there are, like I said, I'm gonna show some others. You've seen the Snapino or those who came, and I'll show the Snap here, you know, and again, but that's a part for programming like this, but it's a bigger part and it has more capability. They also, I have heard, have a new Snap that connects a micro bit to the Snapino. So that way, if you want to do something with MicroPython on a micro bit and control your circuits that way, you can snap a micro bit right into the piece that you can purchase, but I don't have one of those. So that's pretty much the parts. And while I'm moving stuff around, I'll let people ask any questions on that, if there are any. Let me move these out of the way. All right, the other thing I wanted to show before we get started on stuff. Ah, I got parts everywhere, They're everywhere. This is a multimeter. Uh, I have a link in the resources on my PowerPoint. Um, it is a talking multimeter, so I'm gonna turn it on. Already on. You hear it say already on. So if I wanted to go down, well, let's go over here to the ohms or to uh, resistance. So if I do this now, So it says super range, which means zero. Then I put together <laughs> 0, 000 ohms. So I, I would not say it's perfect because of the BC multimeter was much better, but uh, quorum, uh, I'll get back to that in a second, but I would not call this the perfect um, 
multimeter because it's not auto ranging. And what that means is if I put it on, let's say um, a chip that's 1,000, 100,000 ohms, and I have something that's much less, you're going to get a lot of decimal points or the opposite, right? So uh, you have to turn it to fit. But I, you know, you can learn to use this really well. And it's, uh, it's one of the, it also tests uh, capacitors and transistors if you learn how to do it. And it talks just enough that uh, it's usable. Now I suggest you can buy, um, you can actually buy some cords that have clips instead of uh, the points. And the reason is when you have two hands, you're doing other things while you're trying to test. So it's nice to be able to clip one and test in different spots. So um, I suggest you get some uh, extra plugs with it and you can search online for multimeter clips and they also have different kinds of multimeter connectors. Uh, but this is a really good one. Now you will notice if you go to that web page they sent, there's an actual sign that says not for the visually impaired. It's interesting, but there used to be a better multimeter and I found out why they stopped selling it. It was made in BC, Canada and uh, Radio Shack was selling it. They found out a lot of blind people were buying them and they were worried that the blind people would hurt themselves. So they stopped selling talking multimeters. This company sells it, but they put up a warning that says don't use it, but it's definitely good enough for blind and low vision. So just so you know that that is a warning because they don't want to be sued. So kind of silly, but uh, back to Quorum. Um, I don't know. I would say if Quorum can be used for Arduino, then it can be used for the snap circuits uh, with Arduino, or it, if it can be used for the micro bit, it can also be used for the snap circuits. So, um, you know, that I guess the answer is maybe. Um, so I'm gonna start out with, uh, there we go. Start out with this. This is a, um, <laughs> if you notice, if you look, okay, so, if you want to uh, see, if you would like to go to what I'm talking about, um, there is an advanced page I have up. Oh, whoops. Did I get off the camera? There. Yeah, I won't be able to um, show the actual website and the camera. So if you want to go to the website where it has all the build instructions of everything I'm going to show today, uh, you can go to blinksoft.com slash advanced.html. And I think... Heather or somebody will post it as well. Um, but what you'll notice if you're looking at the instructions online and and once once uh, she put that up there, once this is once my advanced page is finished, I'm going to post it as a blog and it'll probably be in our resources for all our snap circuit stuff. But if you look at it now, you find a spelling error, you find a formatting error. I'm sorry, it's. Uh, a work in progress, but it's got a lot of information for builds. So if you notice, if you're really uh, looking at the build instructions, this has two wires coming off instead of having a battery pack right here. And the reason is I didn't want to have to have um, seven battery packs just to show you guys stuff. So I created a way I could just click the battery pack on and then test it out. And you know, so that way I don't have to have a bunch of battery packs. What this is right here, uh, this is my first light sensor. I created this out of just electronics, but there's one part in this. And if you can see, you'll see it in here. Let's see if I can get to it. Uh, I don't even know if I can touch it. Uh, I think I can. Gotta make sure I'm looking at the right one. Yeah, okay. So down in here, Hmm, I'm just checking the build. Oh, here. Uh, nope, that's the base. All right, I'm just looking around here with my hands. I know it's here somewhere. Okay. I <laughs> uh, can't find my own stuff. Okay, so here's my fingers on it. I showed you that uh, chip socket. And what I've done here, this, I purchased the chip socket from the parts list. And in this is not the programming chip that you can buy from a link route. What this is, is a 555 timer. 
And the 555 timer is named that way because it has five uh, 1K ohm resistors inside. So somebody got cute and just named it the 555 timer. But the reason we use a chip like this is this chip has 25 transistors and I think it's three resistors, two diodes. So it has all those parts inside. And if I wanted to build that on something uh, the, out of snap circuits, this is what a transistor looks like. It takes up three, a three by two kind of area in a triangle. So if you can imagine me having 25 of these, I would need probably three plates to really get them all together, right? And then I'd need extra parts. And it would probably take a lot more energy because these little transistors they use in this chip are a lot less. So anyways, this has a 555 timer. And what that basically does is create a pulse to make sounds. And so the more energy it gets, the more pulses it sends. And so it changes the sound. So let's plug it in and see what this light sensor does which is the first one on the web page is the 555 timer. Did I put the battery down? I didn't think I did. That wasn't smart. Okay. So here's the battery. I'm gonna plug it in. And the neat thing about this uh, nine volt battery is it also has a switch on it. So you don't have to add a switch to your project. You just turn it on and off. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. I'm gonna take my headset off hear that and if I cover it so it has a ticking sound and that's because the timer is actually a square wave and it actually goes through this little if you guys know how your braille display works they're piezoelectric so when electricity hits them they bend well this has two little pieces that bends when electricity hits it it's a whistle chip and that's in the junior kit it's the little flat piece with a hole in it and uh, the whistle chip makes noise by vibrating two magnets together with a with a square wave created by the 555 timer so that's what my very first um light detector looked like but this is not the one I developed to start the SALS program or the SALS hardware on. What I did with for the SALS is I used um, a, well, an Arduino like board. Uh, let's see, I had it here somewhere. Yeah, so when I started with the um, SALS, I wanted to have something that I could program. And they had this thing called this is called a Red Bear, and as you'll see, it's a little chip on here, and it's got Bluetooth, and it looks like a bug. It's just a chip, and then it's got a little char. This is a little USB port, and I can plug it together, and I can I can code this. And what this really is is a very basic Arduino. So, if you look here, this is an Arduino. So when I started, before I got to the before I got to that little chip, I wanted to build it and see if I could make it um, work on just the Arduino. So here's my first step to do that, and I'll need my other battery, so I'm going to grab it. Here's my little battery that I run all my snap, Snapinos on because it keeps the battery. It's just like I said last time, if you weren't here, this is just a basic USB charger battery that you use with your cell phones with the cable that comes with the Snapino. I've got the Snapino, I've got a speaker, and then I plug it in. And now I have a little push button here to turn it on, but let's see what happens when I turn it on. And now if I cover it, now this right here is to tune the range. So it's got a little um, triangle resistor that has a slide switch on it. You can get this from the extreme kit or you can buy it as a separate part. Uh, so if I just do this, that's kind of high. Let's see. Well, it's not doing much good, but um, maybe my resistor is bad. But that's a this is how the cells started for me when I was building. Well, throw parts all over the place when I was building the um, probe. And if you looked at that picture on my on my slide, it's a handheld, very small device, but it has all the same. It actually has more memory than this. Those little chips, they have 500K. This has 
a, a max of 32K that you can put on it. So this is a very small memory footprint for the amount of stuff you can do with it. Um, so that's a basic uh, light detector for the Arduino. So I'll kind of pause and let people ask any questions they want to real quick. Um, what, what just happened here? Okay, no questions, good. All right, so, um, and I don't know what's going on here. All right, sorry, I had to check my computer was doing weird things. All right, so that's a basic sound uh, light detector. And uh, like I said, it's a got, for those who, if you can't see it, it's got about, uh, I think it's 11 parts to make that light sensor. Now, the neat thing is you could make it, even though this only makes sound, if you add a speaker, whoops, to the 11 and you add the talkie library, you could have it say the actual value of the uh, frequency you're playing as well as, um, as well as um, audibleize it. So that would be really accessible to do. I did not do that for the first build of it. So, and let's see, if you're looking at the web page, um, I have something before this one, but I think I'm going to go to this one first. And this is what I call talk and blink. And I did this to just show kind of how you make stuff accessible. If I plug this one in, yeah. Oh, whoops, I want to take this piece that I, hmm, I had a piece on this. Hold on a sec. Maybe I stuck it somewhere else. Well, no, that's not good. It might have fell off. I did have an extra piece uh, that I wanted to show and um, it doesn't seem to be attached anymore, which is just great. That means somewhere in my house, there's a lost piece. It's the same triangle shape as the transistor and I used it to amplify the sound. So uh, I will try to put my mic up to this so that you can hear it, um, but I can't understand why where I lost it. So we'll, we'll see. Um, the problem is I do not have a power amp. That is a, a part that you can purchase. I do have a power amp. I just didn't use it for this because I was going to use the speaker. Um, as I said, if I put this on 11, which I'm going to do, this is pin 11 of the Arduino. But if I put it on 11, I can actually use the talkie library. I'm going to start out with just plugging this in before I add the speaker. And you will notice I don't know, you guys can tell me, is that blinking? Yes or no? It is, What's blinking? Blinking. It is blinking. It is blinking. And I was gonna try it myself because I had a little tester here. Ah, here it is. So if you're blind, like I said yesterday, you can use the horn over an LED. So as I'm blind guy, I asked people, but there's an easier way, okay. And if I do this, oh, I'm so sloppy. So this is one way to make it accessible because it's just beeping out loud. So I know it's coming on and going off. Okay. But now if I wanted to make it more interesting, and if you look in the code on that page, uh, advanced.html, um, at the, uh, talk and blink uh, project. Now I've lost the speaker up oh, there it is. And we attach it to the 11. Hmm. Did I unplug it? Okay, right now. I change it so that it makes different sounds for on and off. So it makes a deep tone for uh, off and a louder tone for on. Um, and then 11 is supposed to talk. I am not hearing it. 
Well, my demo is not going well for this one, but we'll, I'll show the talking a little later too. So, but I'm trying to figure out why they stopped talking. That's kind of bizarre. So let me try something. Um, Cause maybe we can fix it. I will do, I'm gonna put a pin in the third digital place on this header. And so you'll see that a, a blind person definitely can do this. I mean, it's not, it's a little weird to try to hunt these little holes down, but one, zero, one, two, three. Let's try a snap. I'm going to get a snap. And then I'm connecting the speaker to ground and pin three, because that also makes it talk. We'll see if that works. That's my ground bar there. And so I'm gonna push it into the speaker and see what happens. It is not talking today. Well, <laughs> this was working yesterday. So I am very confused on why it stopped. Okay, so what I did though, like I said, I have it so that it'll make sounds if I plug a speaker into this 10. I had it so it was talking on 11. But uh, I will figure out why that doesn't work and check the build. So, but if you guys have a, yeah. So if you guys have a Snapino and you have a speaker from the JR, you can do this as well. And like I said, the instructions are on that advanced.html. And I'm hoping since you're online, you can actually look at that. I saw Amy just posted it again. Um, so unfortunately it's not talking, but it was, was the first time I built it. So I'm just trying to figure out why. Well, I'll leave it leave it for now because I have other things to go over. Uh, how's my time doing, Leanne? You're doing fine. We're at 1235. Okay. What does it say? Have, oh, yeah. There you yeah, go. It Someone says, asked, what does it say when it talks? <laughs> yeah. It says on, light on, light off. That's it. All I did was say light on and light off. Now you could have it say just about anything. Now, one thing about that, the talkie library, just Speaking of synthesizers, and I don't have my other synthesizer, but speaking of synthesizers, you can purchase uh, a Emacs speak chip and it's about the size of a stamp. So it's about that big and it has six pins. And that's what I use to make most things talk. Um, I have no idea where it is right now. I think I might've left it at work. So um, what I'm using right now is the talkie library and the talkie library is not a speech synth in every respect. You can record and save words differently on it, but what the talkie library is, is the library, for those of you who have been around a while, it's what TI used on the Franklin speak and spell. It's what uh, they used in some of their talking calculator stuff way back. So it's, it's you, it, you tell it what to say, but only if it has it in the vocabulary. There are ways to add things to the vocabulary, but it's a difficult process. But there are thousands of words it can say. Like I said, it, when this boots up, it usually says power on ready. And again, you'll see this on another project in a, in a minute. Um, but, um, and you'll hear it talk because I know that one works. Um, so anyways, this is the, um, the talk and blink. And um, I hope next time I'll show it, it actually works. So I don't know why. It, had to, you know, had to happen with one of the demos. Now I am going to, let's go to this one. And this one may give us some weird results too. We're gonna find out. All right, let's see here. I gotta find out where my plugs are. All right, there's my plugs. Like I said, I made it so I can use the nine volt battery pack. Now you're going to have to tell me folks if you can see these blink because you may not be able to and if not that then my lights on it are no good. So you see the lights come on or have they? For those who are sighted. I do not see any lights coming on. Okay hold on. Mm, interesting. Let's try what happens. I'm gonna switch these around. So let's play the game. 
Because I might have put it together wrong. You never know. Lights now? Um, I think your hand is covering them. This is light. This is light. Oh, no lights. No lights. Okay, I'm going to put it back because... Ah. Drop pieces into it. It is still on the table under your breadboard, top left corner. <laughs> that breadboard, under it. Oh, under. Under it, top left corner. All right. And let's see if I can get this back together. Yeah. I think it goes there. So unfortunately, this one's going to be ornery too. So I was worried about this one. It, it actually has power to it. So I'm kind of curious to why it's not working. What this is, and it's on oh, there. And now there's lights. Are they blinking? No, just on. So here's the problem. These are blinking. I know I'm blind and I know not what I speak. I know you can see them on it <laughs> and you're, you can't see them blink. If you had a oscilloscope, you could see them, uh, the power is changing. The problem is these two capacitors here are too fast. So the signal they're getting is actually keeping them on. So all it really does is uh, change the brightness and it's not, change, it's not changing slow enough for human eyes. But what's happening is it switches back and forth. This is a switching A-stable multivibrator, <laughs> which is the strangest name for something, but it's something I had to make when I first joined the military. And it was on a board about uh, two inches by two inches. And um, it has two transistors. There's one down here and one down here. The switch, they, the transistors act like a switch. And when you plug it in, the power goes through the resistors to the charges a capacitor and turns on the res, uh, tra um, turns on the transistor to make a voltage. And both of them, one of the transistors goes down, one of them goes up for the voltage. So it's it makes a square wave out. So all this is just to make a timing signal to run something. Now, this is a lot smaller on a breadboard because if you see this little transistor here that's on this three by three piece, or two by, eh, two by two by three piece. It's about the size of a pencil eraser. So if you had a, a small breadboard, you could have two of these on it and everything would be in a little tiny corner of the small breadboard and it would work just the same. I need to get some better capacitors so that you can actually see the blinking or maybe, you know, if I change the resistance, we'll see. So I'll play with this some, but right now the uh, build online is the correct build. Um, what you probably would want to do is get a um, get one of these uh, multimeters and turn on the frequency and listen to the frequency. It'll tell you the, the frequency as it changes. I would have to figure out how to stick it on there, so I'm not going to fight with that right now. But that's what this is. It's an A-stable multivibrator, and it uh, has a lot of parts. The transistors I got from... The transistors I got from the Extreme Kit, and I also ordered extra ones so I could show people them. Uh, the a lot of these parts comes from the Snap Circuit Junior because you know LEDs and uh, just connecting parts. Because really, there's only like uh, two capacitors which you can get from um, the. I think the Rover has some capacitors that are the same, and then you have which I could play with next, see if they're slower. Uh, these resistors. Um, there's four resistors. I don't think they have the 100 resistors in Snap Circuit Junior. So you would have to order the resistors. They're pretty cheap. They're like two bucks or less. They're really cheap if you buy them without the Snap Circuits. So if you had some of the spring things, that's another way you could do it. Um, but that's uh, this A stable multivibrator. I knew that one was going to be a problem, but I wanted to talk about it anyway. Now, for the one, the two that I think people really would like to see. Um, that is the rover that I did a, I used for, I'm going to stack this so it's out of the way in case I cause a problem with my rover. Um, so I'm going to talk a little about the robotic stuff on this now. The RC rover comes with a remote control, but I like to use it 
to program. And so what I do, ugh, let me get this one out. All right. This is my mess right now. So this is the Rover with Snapino mix. And this uses nothing but the parts that are in the uh, Rover and the Snapino kit together. And uh, so if you look here, I have a switch. I have wires back here, they're a mess. If you look at the instructions, they actually say colors, but since I can't see colors, all I did was make sure the yellow goes where the yellow, even if it's purple or the white goes where the white, even if I used a black. So if you really want to make sure your colors are perfect, um, get a color detector and check out the color of the wire. It's kind of hard to get it aimed at it, but once you get it aimed at it, you can tell the colors of the wires. Now on the Snap Circuit Junior, I think they tried to label the wires, but the problem is we found that they just come off. So it's easier just to tell you the, the true truth of electronics. It doesn't matter what color wire you use unless you're using it in some kind of uh, house engineering so that the next guy knows you have a live wire you want to make sure you use the right color there. But if you're doing something like this, uh, not many people are going to scream at you except for it looks ugly like mine does. So here's a switch on this. And then I have a, this is a motor control and a uh, Snapino. Now the motor control is another special piece. It's one of those big boxes I showed you that you can make, but this has 16 transistors, so 16 of those triangle pieces in there. And as you'd know, 16 would not fit on a single board. So what they decided to do is make this for you. It's got 16 transistors and something like four or eight resistors all in this little box. So that tells you how much smaller uh, real electronics is than something you're doing here. But this is real electronics. It's what you got in it. So I've got the motor control, which controls the amount of power going to the engines, because if you actually connected the motor straight to the Snapino, you could actually damage the Snapino board because uh, they draw a lot of power and the Snapino board does not have enough power to give. So what happens is this controls uh, the the switching motors um, and changes their direction and stuff. All you do from Snapino is give it a higher, a low DC voltage from the, uh, and, it, and it's only like milliamps from the Snapino and it goes in and it comes out as power because this is plus, this is minus. So the power comes straight in here and goes out the back when triggered by a pulse. So that's how that works. So let's see what my, I call this uh, carbo. And he's, he's a Carbot. Let's see what Carbo does. Um, and then you can tell me how close I am to what I wanted. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. So he'll keep going, but as you notice, he made a square and turned right each time. That's all he's going to do because I didn't spend a lot of time putting a lot of stuff into it. But if you look at the code, I've made a function for right turn. I made a function for straight. Uh, I made a stop function. That's when he pauses. And then I just did it on the loop and the loop keeps looping until uh, you turn him off. So he'll sit there and spin and my dog does not like that one bit. Uh, he's not a Roomba fan either, but um, he wasn't too pleased with the, the robot spinning in circles. I hope that kind of shows you some of the, um, you know, you can actually add a lot of things to the uh, Arduino Rover. You could, you could uh, add light sensors, uh, which we have, you know, we have photoresistors in the um, junior kits. And that way, if the light comes on, you could have the Rover start roaming around. Um, you can also uh, do tests, um, you know, to see how, um, what time it is or something. Well, actually, this don't do time, but you could actually time events uh, starting from a point when you turned it on and have it do something to scare somebody. Uh, there's all kinds of fun things you could program into it. Uh, one of the fun things to do is to make a map in the room garbage cans, stuff like that. They do that with the Sphero Rover or Sphero uh, balls. If you guys have seen the programmable Sphero balls, uh, Sphero.com, which is another resource that I have on there. There's a reason I have that. 
this is a basic robot that comes with snap circuits, but there are other things you can um, get when doing robots. And let me see, I have, I know I had something here to show you. Let me get it out. I'm just, okay. So before, sorry, I was talking about Sphero and I'm gonna show you Parallax now, but then I'll get back to Sphero. Um, I show this at most of my presentations because it is a robot that once you learn, oh, here's the clips I was talking about. This is a multimeter clip uh, that you can grab something with and then uh, test it without having your hands. So it's just a multimeter clip, it was hanging. So thanks, Heather. So this is the Parallax robot. And the reason I'm showing it is if you learn to code on the Snapino, this is exactly the Snapino, um, or not the Snapino, but the Arduino. This is the Arduino here in my hand, and that's what's in the Snapino, okay? And this, if you look right here, there's an Arduino board underneath. It actually pushes up in with these, um, these headers actually connect. So this robot actually will program the same way this robot will. I can actually make it do the same stuff just as easy, just as little code. So this is something you build by yourself. And the real nice thing is the Parallax folks, I've been going to some of their meetings and after they found out about me, um, they are making their website more accessible. So a lot of their instructions for their P2 chip and stuff are now being described better, um, both graphically and, you know, they, they correctly tell how to link stuff together, which is a lot more helpful. Um, so he's supposed to be fixing the parallax instructions. I built this uh, one with the help of my brother on the phone, and I built two more since then, because it's really easy once you know how to put this stuff together, it's just screws and stuff. But I will tell you, it's um, it's a little more work learning how to put something like this together. So that's the parallax. And then let me go back to the, go back to Sphero. Most of you guys who have seen Sphero have seen the uh, ball, the little Sphero robot, but this is the Sphero RVR. It looks like a tank. It's got treads on one side, both sides, and it's got a little thing, but I can take this off. And here's what's really cool. If you're changing from snap circuits to regular robots, let me get this out of here. I forgot, okay. So you can take it apart. It has um, different um, connectors and stuff, but you can actually take this, and I'm gonna unconnect it right now. So I don't have all these snaps on it, but you so can actually pulling the breadboard off of the yeah, RC I'm taking, Rover base. So I'm taking the breadboard off the RCS and then I'm taking the Sphero uh, R Rover and I'll put the, well, I'm not gonna be putting it on because I don't wanna move my wires and I wanna fight that way again. This base here will fit on top of the Rover then you could fit this. And I've actually used um, tie straps. It will hold onto the top just like anything else. With these wires here, they go through the holes. You can plug this into your Arduino and you can use almost the exact same code as I used here on here. Now, why would you wanna use this? This has more sensors than the, um, than the snap circuit body. So this has um, Bluetooth. It has timing sensor, it has all kinds of stuff. So you can actually make it more like a Roomba, right? My next goal is to build this into a helicopter landing pad with the snap circuits. So I'll have us, you know, I'll have just, and you don't need this motor controller because you can go directly using serial communications to this and it'll power the Arduino too. This is a power plug. So you can power it, you can control it with serial communications. And so what I'm gonna do is put the Snapino up in this corner and I'm have a little landing pad and I'm gonna put a little remote control helicopter so I can drive this around and launch it. So that's my next little fun. And I'll probably be able to show that next time I go into my advanced craziness. So um, there you go. So this is the Sphero RVR and uh, it's a couple hundred bucks, um, but it is really rugged uh, and it, it's chargeable. Um, this, if you notice, my battery door is open because I'm charging it. Uh, there's a 
battery downstairs that I'm charging. Um, so, yep, that's my little tank buddy that um, is pretty impressive to, you can run it out on the lawn. Uh, they said it doesn't swim though, so don't do that, um, unfortunately. So then I'll get to my last, what uh, time we got, Liam? Liam? You have seven minutes. Oh, geez, I better jump to this then. Okay, last one, and most of you have seen it that, that have come to my presentations before. But like I said last time, we had kids that really wanted to um, make their own um, Perkins keyboard. So I use snap circuits with a snap, you know, seven buttons, wires. Uh huh. Well, takes having it connected, I guess. I'm just going to snap this on here right now and unplug it. Okay. Let's see if you can hear this over this. I don't know if you heard that. It was very soft. We know it. Let me soft. see if I can get it to the mic, though. Is my. Oh, I can't do that. All right, I'm going to take my headset off and so you can listen. All right, here we go. Give me a second. I got to plug it in. We heard Is that better? We heard that a robotic better? voice. Yeah, but it if said, you just tell us what it said. It said power on circuit ready. Okay. And um, so if I actually had this, the silly plug that I had, uh, which I don't know where it is, uh, you can actually type now and it'll say each letter as you type. The actual um, instructions, you hear it say A? Anyways, it's talking. Uh, <laughs> it's saying A, B, and as I type, so if I do this, it's C. So it actually says all the letters. If you use a real speech chip like the Emacs speech chip, you can also get it to talk words. With, with talkie, it takes a lot more work to make it talk words, but it can be done. So what I'm working on now is to make it more like a note taker uh, to be able to talk words and actually save files and stuff. I've actually been, I say I'm working on it, but I'm about to put this one up as a blog um, showing people how to do it. So if you look at my blinksoft.com, or no, it's not blinksoft, my, it's blindelectronics.com, which is my blog. I have not posted for several years, but up there I have an FM radio already with snap circuits. And now I'm going to put this um, Perkins with all the instructions on how to make it, how to add a power amp, how to add a... Um, how to add a earphone thing, but the instructions are in advanced.html. So I've already got the instructions. I'm just going to explain it a lot better in the blog. So that's about all the builds I have. Um, is there questions since we don't have a lot of time? I haven't seen any, but I'll give them a minute to put. So they're either really confused, asleep, or. <laughs> um, the, look, there's anything you can build with these. So I've, I've had a lot of fun as a old man, um, and I continue to build stuff. So um, I, kids are just amazed with it when they get to working on it. And I hear they're having a lot of fun this week too. So um, the advanced site will be up there until I start putting it on resources, then it'll be on our resource page. And I'm gonna explain it a lot better <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I the re, I think Leanne and them are going to put up my. Yeah, I think she's going to put up my presentation or the PowerPoint that has all these links in it, so uh, they'll be able to. You'll be able to look at the PowerPoint and see the resources there. We'll work so. on the follow up email containing yeah. the resources so they can go out to you. And again, I'm going to start putting these when you go to the websites where tech, uh, where um, like the Snappino, the Rover and all are, I'm going to work a resource page in there that'll have advanced stuff. It'll have uh, links and stuff like that. So 
that's about it. Uh, I don't think I had any other things on the presentation except for questions. So if there aren't questions, I don't want to hold people forever. Well, I want to say thank you so much, Ken. Oh, well, uh, I did have one other thing to say. Yes. This is a this is a USB shield. This is something I wanted to show, but I bought it and I must have got it from a Chinese knockoff because it doesn't work. But you can plug this into the you can plug this into the Arduino board. Then you can control a braille display. And I was going to show you a dice roller that rolls dice in braille using the Arduino kit. So um, I will um, the topic about building. Sorry. Heather, go ahead. Oh, well, shoot, there is an objective that I didn't hit. These are really easy to write the instructions for those who don't know how. Build it first, start with the bottom layer or top layer and write it backwards. So I've, I've got this built. I'll look at the top one, which is this piece. It's on the third layer and I'll write the instructions on the third layer and I go backwards until I have nothing left on the board. So then when you build it back, you go layer one, layer two, layer three. So that's how we write the instructions. We had a 10-year-old, uh, which is Heather McKenzie's son, Connor. He wrote all the, well, a lot of the instructions for Junior and everything for the rest of the kids. He was a, a great help to us. Well, thank so, you so much again. Sorry, I, I almost missed that one. That is okay. Thank you so much.